Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is kind of exciting and we are looking at the Delta game emulator on iOS. So if you're not aware, recently Apple has allowed the use of emulators on their phones. So now people can start putting emulators on the app store and you can use the internal file system to have your ROMs and load them on. This wasn't allowed previously. You had to jailbreak or kind of sideload the apps, but now it's on the app store, 100% legal because emulators aren't illegal. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So I have two different iPhones right here. I'll show you what the app looks like on both and how you can also transfer stuff in between. So to download it, you, all you have to do is go to the app store, look up Delta Game Emulator, and you download it 100% free. And over here, it gives you a run through of what everything is. And the systems that it supports is the NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Nintendo DS and they're planning on having more as well. The cool thing is that it also supports controllers. So if you have something like a backbone controller or an Xbox controller, you wanna play wirelessly, you can do that as well. You have safe states. Honestly, you have a lot. So if you're curious about all the details, you can go on the app right here and look at it. Fast forward, 3D touch, whatever. It's, it's awesome. And I think that there's gonna be way more emulators on the App Store. This is just a good start. So when you open the actual emulator, you're going to see nothing. From there, what you have to do is go ahead and press the plus, hit files, and then it'll take you to your file system. Usually on iPhone, you're gonna have an iCloud and you're gonna have my iPhone. So if you go to my iPhone, the Delta app is gonna be right here. This is where you can store your ROMs or wherever you want if you wanna just have it locally. But what I did, I stored my ROMs on my iCloud drive. That way I can direct Delta to pick it up from here, but also I can just go from here and download whatever I want. You can also achieve this if you have Dropbox or Google Drive, but you know, I have iCloud, why not use it? So we go to Delta and then I already have the ROMs loaded. You'd go to wherever the ROMs are. I made folders for them just so I can keep track of it and then you click on it and then you load the ROM. And then once you do that, it's going to auto populate in here with its own folder. And then for any reason, if it doesn't have a picture, you can go here, change artwork, games database, and you can look up the game. So this was Yoshi's Island. and then you can select which cover art you want, which is also really, really cool. Now let's look at the settings here. The settings aren't as in depth as something like RetroArch is, but it's a good start. So you have four controller slots. So if you wanna connect four controllers to a device, you can. So if you have an iPad and you wanna prop it up and play Mario Kart with four people, you can do that. So you can set the touch controls that are right here, and I'll show you later that I plug this in. You can set the controls for that as well. And then you have controller skins. So right here, each system has a default skin from Delta. And if you wanna change that, you would just go ahead and click on it, add. You do have to download the skins themselves. I haven't done that yet. I haven't really found the need to but if you have a skin that you want, you just download it and it works fine. Post edit me here. There actually is a website to download more skins for the Delta emulator. You just go to Delta skins, it's a GitHub. And from here you can go and click on the emulator you want and then download the skin that you want. And then same thing, you put in a file system and then upload it to the actual emulator. So pretty easy and pretty dope. And then you can have different settings like haptic feedback, you can turn on syncing. So if you turn on here, you have Google Drive and Dropbox. That way, Delta would automatically sync between devices with these two things. But again, because I use iCloud and I don't really plan on playing on both all the time, I don't really have the need for this, but it's cool that they have it. Now, one thing you will need are the BIOS files for Melon DS, which is the DS emulator. These are available online. You can go ahead and find them and then add them. And then adding them is the same way. You click on it and then point to where it is in the file system. And over here, they have credits for all the people who have developed it, which is really, really cool. If you want to support them via Patreon, you can. And that's it. 
let's go ahead and do a play test for each of the games. I'll do some on the iPhone 12 Pro Max and also on the iPhone 13 mini, but performance on both is great. So you do get a haptic feedback, which is really nice, but you can turn that off if you don't want it. Okay, and then we can go to menu here, and you have a few different options in the menu as well. You can do a safe state, load state, cheat codes, which you have to load them yourself. Fast forward and hold buttons if there's a game that requires you to hold a button. And then from there, if you wanna go back out of it, you can just go main menu. If you just wanna hop back in, you click on the game. So do you wanna resume where you were at or restart? You can choose from there. So I'll restart it. Now the save states are actually pretty cool. I was playing uh, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. So I have a save state here. Sometimes it might crash for you. Like for me, it crashed a few times, but I just exit out of the app and came back in. So let's do Yoshi's Island, restart, menu, load state. And this is the save state that I had. And we are back in it. Apologies for this light reflection. but it does pass the Yoshi's Island test. And if you want, you can also put this in a horizontal. Form. menu here. What I haven't found yet, and I don't think it's a feature yet, is being able to move these around. But, you know, the app is pretty new, so it is what it is. Let's do main menu. Now let's go ahead and plug in the Backbone controller and show you how that runs. So Backbone controller plugged in automatically works. You can use your touch screen to still navigate. Let's go to tech and advance. And you have D-pad control. What you don't have is an FPS counter. I'm sure they might add that in the future. And also, once you have a controller plugged in, you can't really access the touchscreen menu. But if you want to, you can just unplug and you get it back if you ever need to. Plug it back in. Now from here, you can actually change the button mapping when you have a controller plugged in. You just have to go to settings, and then right here, it already recognized that I'm using the backbone controller. Click on that, it's, it's bugging out a little bit. Let's go ahead and plug it back in. Have it calm down. Okay, so it's plugged in, hit customize controls, and then per emulator, you can customize the mapping. So if we go to GBA, I can change this to be whatever, right? It's, I'm, it's already what it is now, but it's really cool. You can just map it to whatever control you have. And then we have DS as well. So this one does require that you have the BIOS. And once you do, that is an iconic sound. You have the DS home screen and touch screen works. So if I wanna go to Picto Chat, haven't been in this in a while. 
This is so cool. How do we get out of Picto Chat? And let's go to Mario Kart DS. So you have your top screen on the left and the bottom screen on the right. Now what I am curious about, I haven't played with this yet. Okay, we have left stick automatically tracks the D-pad, which is nice. Oh yeah, this is a great way to play DS. Oh my gosh. Go ahead and what is the start button here? Okay, so we did that. Let's see if we can change how the DS format looks. Let's go to backbone. I don't think we can. It probably has to fall under a skin. That's the only skin we have. So it seems like it's doing side to side. Yeah, so it looks like we can't change the format if I want one side bigger than the other one, but it's all good. No complaints here. Let's go ahead and resume it. And then if we want to play with on-screen controls, again, just unplug this. Have this really cool pink DS light layout. And then let's say we want to play horizontally. We can do that too. Which is actually a lot better than I thought. You still have touchscreen controls here. Really, really cool stuff. And last but not least, we have N64. But let's go ahead and hop to the iPhone 13 and show that off. So we're in the iPhone 13 mini now. Let's go ahead and load it up. Again, the save states are saved locally. So if we want to pull them off, I can just take it from here, upload the save state to iCloud, and then pull it down from here. But I'm not gonna do that because I'm kind of just messing around with the games right now. The games are stored on iCloud though. So the file structure is the same in terms of where they're located. Let's do Mario Kart 64 on the N64. Okay, so this is a definitely a smaller form factor, a little weirder to use. The haptics, like every time you hit the, the corners, you feel a haptic, it's awesome. You can even go sideways. A little weirder, but not too bad. Let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in. And now you have a portable N64 in a small form factor. So that was a quick little video on the Delta Game Emulator app on iOS. Again, very exciting that we have emulators on iOS now legally and through the app store so you don't have to jailbreak and it's awesome. You've seen before that I have an Android phone for emulators but now I can use my daily driver and just use that if I want to pop in and play a game. I'm excited to see where this takes us in terms of the different emulators that can come to the app store. Getting PSP, PS1 would be awesome but this just happened. 
So I appreciate whatever we can get. Interested to see what you guys think. If you guys have already tried Delta, if you are waiting for other apps, or if you never emulated a game before, now's a good time to try. Now I can't really speak on the game backups and where I got them from. You can get them from Google it, but it's really cool they have a way to play these games that aren't really accessible now. I appreciate you guys watching the video. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. If you like the video, drop a like. If you want to subscribe to see more content in the future, I'd appreciate that. But if you don't, we got beef. Just kidding. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.